November 24, 1971, an unknown man under the alias Dan Cooper, or as better known, D.B. Cooper, walked into Portland International Airport and purchased a one-way ticket to Seattle Tacoma International Airport. While on flight, Cooper handed a note to a stewardess demanding $200,000 and four parachutes, threatening to detonate a bomb in his briefcase if his demands were not met. After the plane landed, he was given the items and the plane took off heading towards Mexico City with only the flight crew and a stewardess. Somewhere over Washington State, Cooper jumped out of the back of the plane. Despite an intensive FBI investigation, D.B. Cooper was never found and it remains a mystery to this day. Here with me is the FBI sketch artist who was assigned to the case, Roy Rose. Thank you for meeting with me, Mr. Rose. Tell us a little bit about what you did for the FBI. I was uh, with the FBI for 44 years, uh, from 1943 until I retired in 1987. Was uh, a specialist uh, in uh, visual information and uh, was assigned uh, to the FBI laboratory. Which One is... of my duties uh, in the laboratory uh, was to be a sketch artist also. I uh, worked uh, all kinds of federal cases, bank robbery, uh, kidnapping, uh, espionage, uh, hijacking, civil rights, uh, any, any kind of uh, uh, federal, uh, federal charge. The most notorious uh, case that I ever worked was the uh, assassination of President Kennedy. Describe to us the day of the hijacking and how you were assigned to the case. It was around Thanksgiving in 1971 Northwest Airlines uh, had a, a Boeing 727 that was hijacked on the West Coast uh, uh, going up to, uh, to Washington. I was uh, sent to uh, Minneapolis where uh, the Northwest Airlines headquarters was and uh, I met there the two stewardesses that were serving on the hijacked airplane. Uh, in order to uh, get a description of the uh, of the hijacker for a sketch. How were you assigned to the case? I was assigned uh, uh, by my uh, office at headquarters and uh, uh, requested to go to Minneapolis to meet the stewardesses. Did you have to leave right away? Did you have yes, to I did. Rush? I, I did. I, I left uh, without any preparation. Describe to us the scene when you arrived. When I arrived at the uh, airport in Minneapolis, uh, uh, I went to a, a, a vacant room uh, that was set aside there and um, uh, talked to the uh, two stewardesses. And how did they describe him? They described uh, the unknown subject, uh, D.B. Cooper, as a middle-aged uh, person uh, dressed in a suit uh, with a, a dark complexion uh, and sort of a protruding lower lip. Uh, the rest of the face was... Uh, uh, rather nondescript, nothing unusual about it. Uh, the two stewardesses uh, differed a little bit on their description. Were they afraid or nervous? When No, they didn't. I don't recall them being um, uh, nervous at that time. Of course, there had been some time that had passed since the actual hijacking. So how do you assemble a sketch from what they described? Well, uh, to begin with, I, I get a general description of the, of the person and then I focus in on the uh, individual facial features and um, uh, sketch uh, each uh, and put them together and uh, make it into a facial composite. Where are the original sketches now? I, I assume they're at the FBI headquarters and file. You were the only sketch artist on the D.B. Cooper case and your drawings have been seen by millions on television and books and all over the internet. Do you enjoy the public publicity you get? Well, it's satisfying to uh, uh, believe that uh, the likeness that you uh, uh, came up with was close enough that they felt that it could be useful. So how did they specifically use your drawing in the investigation? Well, they distributed it all over the country uh, in all the law enforcement offices, of course, but it was also published in the, all the uh, newspapers and, and um, many magazines. It was given a, um, a lot of publicity. 
what other tactics did the FBI use to investigate? Of course, they, they had all the officers uh, alerted to uh, search for, uh, for D.B. Cooper. Uh, they never uh, discovered who he was or uh, never found anything. Was there any evidence found later on? Uh, in 1980, there was a family named Ingram that uh, was um, on a picnic along the shore of uh, the Columbia River. Their son, Brian, who was eight years old and a little playmate, was out looking for firewood. Uh, along the uh, sandy bank of the Columbia River, uh, they saw this uh, uh, object in the sand that was sticking out and they uh, went up closer and found it was a, a packet of, uh, of bills. It was very deteriorated, uh, partially covered. So they, they got it out and they turned it over to the local FBI uh, agents, sent it to uh, the FBI laboratory in Washington, uh, determined that it was in fact a part of the ransom money. They found about uh, uh, $6,000, I think it was $5,800 all told. So how did that part of the money end up on the side of the river? There was uh, no way to know. Uh, it, it, uh, they never really knew for sure how it ended up there. There have been many different stories about what really happened to D.B. Cooper. Do you think there's any truth to any of them? The story of the hijacking and D.B. Cooper, sort of a legend out there in that area especially. And uh, periodically there would be someone that would uh, come forward and uh, uh, say that they thought they knew who D.B. Cooper was. But uh, in each case, they were checked out, and in no case did they uh, find that uh, the person that uh, they were referring to was, uh, was actually D.B. Cooper. If Cooper was alive today, where do you think he would be? Well, uh, at this point... Uh, D.B. Cooper would be elderly if he were still living, probably uh, 80 or 85 years old. Do you think D.B. Cooper could have survived the jump considering it was into uh, a forest on a dark, stormy night? No way to really know, but uh, uh, it's uh, sort of doubtful that uh, anyone could jump out of a plane at 10,000 feet in that kind of weather without any protective clothing of any kind and survive. The FBI is still investigating the case to this day. Do you think they will ever find out what happened to D.B. Cooper? Hard to say, but it's becoming kind of doubtful. Do you think it's worth it for the FBI to continue the investigation? Well, I think it's a good idea to keep the case open. Uh, you never know, and uh, maybe someday it will pay off. What do you personally think happened to D.B. Cooper? Oh, it would be pure speculation, but uh, uh, I think it's very possible that, uh, that he, when he jumped, he uh, uh, may have even landed in the river and drowned and, uh, and was never found. There you have it. The D.B. Cooper case is the only unsolved airplane hijacking in American history. Even with the expertise and determination of people like Mr. Rose at the FBI, the world may never know what happened to D.B. Cooper.